What's up, guys? Um, it's 2.45 a.m. on a Wednesday morning, 22nd of February. And I'm leaving for Sweden, Stockholm, in about one hour. I think I'm getting picked up in like 15 minutes because my flight's at 6. 6.30 from Brussels, Charleroi. And for those of you who travel in the area from that airport, you know that airport is not accessible. We talked to us about like around this time. Um, so luckily I got my uh, friends to drop me off at the airport. Um, great, they're willing to sacrifice their sleep to help me out. But I get a lot of questions. People always asking me, how do you make things work? How do you travel a lot? How do you study and, you know, combine everything? And I guess this is just maybe giving you guys insight into what the, what the, how much sacrifice is made and how much flexibility is required. Because now it's like, I haven't slept today because I slept in the train when we were coming down from Utrecht. Um, but like, I'm trying to buy myself time tomorrow considering I'm going to be traveling. Um, I'm going to be finding my way around in Sweden and stuff like that. So I will not have time to do the work that I have planned to do this week because I work with goals. And so now I'm just like trying to read and um, the work I'm supposed to do like today. So some things I plan to do today, I'm doing them now so I can buy myself time. Um, and at the airport, I'm going to do a little bit of work as well, depending on if I'm feeling sleepy or not. Um, but yeah, guys, basically, this is how it works. Sometimes sacrifice sleep, sometimes burn the midnight candle. Uh, sometimes, you know, just it requires you to be a lot more intentional with your time. Uh, to be able to actually make space to do things you want to do because um, i'm going to sweden i'm going to have time to to work in sweden because i'm going to go to the library i'm visiting a friend who studies there um, so it's going to be great but it's just like you know you have to also make some compromises and shift things around with to create the space to to do that so that's basically um an example of what it takes to you know study do your work you have to do and at the same time still travel um, fun fact is this flight to Sweden cost 36 euros to Sweden and back. So it's really not expensive. 36 euros. I'll probably spend more than 36 euros staying here um, if I do not go to Sweden. So it's probably sometimes cheaper to go than to stay here. But anyways, um, yeah, that was just an insight into one of the nights where I have to bend things around to make things work. Okay, guys. So um, welcome back. <laughs> I'm currently in Sweden. It's now 22nd, Wednesday, almost midnight, so almost 23rd. And like, I just got to Sweden today. Still a little bit sleep deprived, but I had a nap. So um, I'm gonna sleep for seven hours tonight and I'm done with this article. Um, so I spent the whole day like exploring Sweden for the most part, uh, started on the train and the airport while coming here. Um, explore the city and then go back home had a nap and then like doing work now so basically more or less giving you more insights into like how i deal with the whole flexibility thing while still trying to uh, travel see people and, and um, catch up with people i've not caught up with in a long time uh, but i guess i also want to use this video to update um, you guys on what i'm doing now I feel like I've not made an update video in a long time, but this is going to be like, you know, talking about where I'm in my medical education, medical education, and what I'm doing, what that's going to be like, because uh, I think this is quite, for me, at least one of the most exciting parts of my medical program in a long time, because it's so challenging and it's so new for me. Um, so I thought, okay, let me use this video and like tell you guys more about that. Um, so basically i am doing my rotation now my scientific rotation in amsterdam what we call a vagus haplica stage or a scientific rotation and basically this is a rotation which is 12 weeks long um probably the longest yeah, definitely the longest rotation um, and it's supposed to give you more knowledge and insight and equip you with the skills which you need as a medical doctor to carry out scientific research and get answers for yourself so normally the faculty, the medical faculty has um, certain offers. So um, they have options which you could choose from or you could arrange something yourself. Uh, so of course, because I definitely always try to do things which I'm passionate about and like, you know, answer questions I'm passionate about or use this opportunity to actually answer a question I've been curious about or just do research and do things um, which I'm passionate about and have a passion for because I think that's sustainably what's going to 
give me the motivation I need to actually do things to the best of my ability. Um, so I always strive to like do stuff I'm passionate about, um, as far as I can control, of course. So I looked at the faculty um, offers and I didn't see anything that interested me back then. Um, so I decided to go in search of my own um, a research group, research topic, someone who would give me, who would be willing to provide me for a topic. I didn't have any topic in mind per se, but I knew I wanted to do something in the realms of um, dealing with diverse patients and how um, the healthcare can be improved in that in regards to that. So I knew I was searching for something in that direction, but I didn't know exactly what yet. So I just went online. I don't even know what search words I was using, but I know I was using a lot of words that would most likely bring me towards um, research that is, you know, done on diverse patient groups, uh, diverse ways of, um, uh, different ways of uh, looking at patient healthcare, tackling certain problems that have to do with diversity and inclusion in healthcare, stuff like that. So as God will have it, um, I was blessed to come across the research group in Amsterdam um, that mostly does work into cardiovascular risk management in different ethnicities in the Netherlands and also in Ghana and other parts of the world. So of course, I was like, okay, this sounds interesting, but am I gonna get accepted? Am I like, who do I need to reach out to and stuff like that? So I reached out to a professor in Amsterdam uh, whom, whom, whom I've admired for a long period of time because of the work he does and just how you know he's, he's owning his space in, in, in this environment. So I reached out to him on LinkedIn. I think I sent him an email first. Um, and then he didn't reply after like three, four weeks. And then I was like, okay, maybe because he has multiple emails online and works like different departments. I'm like, how am I sure the email even got to him? And then I don't know, somebody just told me to reach out to him on LinkedIn. So I did that. So I reached out to him on LinkedIn and lo and behold, as you would have it, he replied on LinkedIn and said he never received the mail. So I sent the mail again. I was like, oh wow, thank God he actually replied to me on LinkedIn. You never know how far this LinkedIn messages can go, guys. You never know who is looking at your profile. You never know, you know, you just never know. You, uh, you just have to follow your instincts sometimes, follow your gut feelings and try stuff. So he reached out to me, sent the email again to the correct email this time. We set up a meeting, we talked, I told him about my goals, what I want to do, what part of my, where I am in my medical program. I was like, okay, you, they do a lot of students, they take a lot of students who come for the internships, scientific internships, so there definitely is something for me there. And if I find the topic interesting, which obviously I did based on our discussion, um, I'm welcome. But of course, there's still a lot of work that has to go into you know, the faculty agreeing to the topic and it being something which will actually you know, fulfills the criteria for your scientific rotation. So there was still a lot of work to be done. But at least the professor said, you are welcome. That just sounded like money has the professor said. But anyways, said you're welcome. So that was good. I um, had a meeting with another supervisor who is going to work more closely with me so we could like you know come up with a research question and see how we want to like frame the protocol the proposal and everything the faculty needs to be able to say okay this is fine you can go on, go ahead with it it meets our criteria um, so i did that with the proposal it was a whole hassle back and forth but eventually it was approved and got the official email from amsterdam saying welcome to amsterdam and say that was really it was a moment for me because I've always wanted to live in Amsterdam. So like I was like, oh, I'm coming close to this goal of mine to live in Amsterdam. And eventually I'm not living there. But at least maybe working there is a, it's a step, it's a baby step closer to, you know, actually living there in the future. And we're getting the baby steps. Um, so that all went well. It was a little bit of a stressful period because you have to write proposals and protocols and constantly back and forth with supervisors, faculty, and making sure everything is okay. Um, everything is scientifically correct as well. Um, but we got we got that part done, finalized everything, and then after I was in Aruba and my travels in Colombia, I came back, and the next week I started in Amsterdam. Um, team was great, supervisors were great. Um, it's in it's in Amsterdam, so it's like you know it's 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 a whole different environment for me, which is quite stimulating, and I like that too. Um, but the part which I also find most exciting for me now is the content of what I'm doing. I'm going to be doing a lot of um, research, so analysis, um, um, understanding, interpretation of data, um, categorization of data, a lot of statistical stuff, which I was really once very good at math. You would almost not imagine now if you ask if you are to be judged based on what I can do now. But um, once I was really good at math, then I was like math mechanics and like, you know, pure math in high school. 
um, but I never really was good at statistics. And the best of the statistics courses were like, you know, those trainings and stuff like that, which I never really paid attention and SPSS and everything. I was like, what am I going to use this? Um, now I do have to use it. And the knowledge just never, never knowledge, you know? So, um, and now I'm really learning a lot of the basics about, uh, you know, different types of variables, different types of tests and when to use this one, when to use that one. And I'm happy, I have a lot of tools for that, thankfully. So that's helpful, like YouTube videos, Amboss, I have a subscription to like, they have a lot of summar summaries and stuff. So it is a lot of learning, starting with like basic stuff, which for the most part I recognize because I know I've seen them before. I just wasn't paying attention. It's like I recognize them and now I'm like, oh, I understand this. And then when I see, you know, Pearson correlation coefficient or this and that, I'm like, oh, I understand what logistic regression means. Uh, where it's like there's a lot of recognition and you know better understanding now which feels so cool to me because you know statistics has always been like this abracadabra i'm like how don't i get it you know like i should just get it especially in the exams as well when you like have the progress test and you just don't it's, it seems so simple to calculate the positive predictive value you know one plus one is two but because you're so out of touch with the with the stuff it feels, you know, it feels distant as well. So I'm happy that this rotation is like giving me the space to really go back to the basics of statistics and then like build from that. Um, so I'm learning a lot of the basics, a lot of the implementation of kind of what I use the databases and stuff. Um, just doing the, the, you know, the practical part of the analysis and interpreting that as well. I think I'm really just excited about the growth, you know, cause as someone who is potentially looking into doing more stuff with numbers in the future, like health economics, policy, how these things all influence the bigger healthcare in general and health systems. I think the knowledge I'm getting here is really crucial for my future as well, where it's not only exciting because it's so new, but it's also exciting because I know how useful this is gonna be in my future. So it's like I'm even more motivated to like spend sleepless nights, you know, reading, working, um, you know, carving out time out of my tight schedule to like do this because I know this is important for me. Because a lot of the times so I'm trying to minimize the scientific rotations because it's just about exposing me to the world of research. So it's not really that big of a deal. But for me, it's a big of a deal because there's a, there's a lot, you know, what it's a lot of my future that depends on this. Um, so I need to do it like well and good enough. Well, there's a lot of steps now already. I noticed that I'm like, hmm, I could see how normally I would easily skip this because it's not like an essential part. But I'm like, I want to do my best. I want to make this as good. Like, I want to make this my best work yet. Um, because I'm the one in sole control. I have sole leadership over what the outcome of my research is going to be. Because I'm the one doing research. Um, the others are just there to, like, help me and assist me. So I can really tell, like, that mindset of, like, I want to make this the best it can be. Um, is really present because I know how important this is for my future. Um so yeah that's what i'm doing now more or less it's going to be 20 weeks of research and then hopefully a few weeks after that to like write a publication if we're going for publication and then i have two more rotations before i'm done but i'm going to update you guys more or less on how it's going so far now it's a lot of um reading doing background work so trying to set the right foundations on which i'm going to be doing the analysis on still still have to receive the data which i'm going to be using for the study to apply for the for the, for the data from the study group um, it's going to be a prospective study or a retrospective because we already have the data um, and I guess I'll update you guys more about this. Let me know if you, want, if you want to know more about what my research topic is then I can make a video about that but this is just giving you guys an overview of what it is like to do the research internship but let me know if you want to know more about what the topic actually is and I can talk more about that in another video. It's quite interesting for me, quite interesting if you have to do migration health um, and hypertension which of course is very close to my um, um, my my bed very very close to home um so that is very interesting for me um but yeah basically now i'm just like doing the background work trying to understand the basis of statistics and then when i have the data i have test data which i'm going to like use to just like familiarize myself with different programs and then i get the data i can get into like full analysis mode i'll give you guys an update on how it's going when i have my mental breakdowns or when i'm not understanding anything or things are not just making sense um, um i'll update you guys until then, yeah, this is uh, this is going to be for the next couple of months. Research, statistics, analysis, interpretations. Um, yeah, hope this video um, helps someone. Hope this video inspired someone who is maybe going through 
research as well and statistics and data and feels frustrated feels like you're alone you're not alone in this we're all in this together um people are going to be four they don't have two heads so we definitely can do it too i definitely can do it you can do it um hang in there there is light at the end of the tunnel i um, hope you enjoyed this video guys and uh, until next video stay blessed